when and how to use systems thinking. First of all, and this is sort of a checklist that you can use, the problem is chronic and has defied people's best intentions to solve it. The problems you're working on are often of that nature. Secondly, diverse stakeholders find it difficult to align their efforts despite their shared intentions, often because of the competitiveness that they experience amongst themselves. Third, they're trying to optimize their part of the system without understanding their impact on others. So they may approach a collective gathering, but with the intent of figuring out how can I get enough for my organization. That's not the same thing as trying to optimize the whole system, despite the fact that they say that that's what they're there to do. Stakeholders' short-term efforts might actually undermine their own intentions to solve the problem. They might hurt other people's ability to be effective, and in the long term may actually hurt their own abilities to achieve what they say they want to achieve. People are working on a large number of disparate initiatives at the same time. So we say in this case that the whole is less than the sum of the parts, definitely not greater than the sum of the parts. And finally, promoting particular solutions. I, for example, a best practice comes at the expense of continuous learning. So a client in another city, former CEO, had really caught on to this idea of housing first, which is actually considered a best practice. But for him, everything became, well, it's housing first, it's housing first, it's housing first. He was driving everyone else in that coalition crazy because he wasn't learning from what it would take to make it happen in that city. He was just promoting his own solution. How do you do this? First of all, use systems thinking early on in the process to diagnose why a problem persists. As another colleague once said, don't try to reinvent a broken wheel. <laughs> really dig down, understand why people have not been successful so far. Use systems thinking to invite others in. Consciously build a more complete picture of what the real elephant looks like based on the inputs from different perspectives. Assuming that everyone sees part of the elephant and most likely no one sees the elephant. Look for unintended consequences. Unintended consequences that hurt other stakeholders, unintended consequences that hurt yourself. Look for mental models. Look for underlying purpose, the current payoffs versus the espoused payoffs. Be patient and persistent in working towards the long term. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to ignore small successes. But I want to suggest that you make a distinction between small successes and quick fixes. We need small successes, whether it's learning from failure or learning from success. The difference in systems thinking is not that you're ignoring the short term in favor of the long term. It's that you are thinking about the short term within the context of the long term, recognizing that systems are, one person said perverse, I say seductive. They actually often lead people do, to do things, the wrong things for the right reasons. And we need to be aware of that tendency. Building a new platform for relationships a new network, Relationships 2.0, whatever, 
is a very useful leading indicator, small success for what that system, that newly configured set of relationships can produce over time. So you may not necessarily be seeing measurable outcomes right away, but if you're building, helping people build a platform to work together differently, that in and of itself can be a small success. And finally, ask systemic questions. Ultimately, what's required is a spirit of continuous inquiry and continuous learning. I'm going to leave you with a few powerful systemic questions. The first one is why, despite our best efforts, have we been unable to solve this problem? It ain't for lack of trying, it ain't for lack of working hard, but then why is it? And that, answering that question can be the focus of what you pay attention to. Secondly, how might we be partly responsible, albeit unwittingly, for the very problem we're trying to solve? I was mentioning to someone who is reflecting on the mental models they held and assuring them the truth will set you free. If you really understand how you're contributing, you've got a lot more leverage over doing it differently. Ask, what might be the unintended consequences of our proposed solutions? I did some work with the American Diabetes Association several years ago. They said the best thing they got out of working with me was even asking that question. And finally, and this may be the hardest one of all, what might we have to give up in order for the whole to succeed? And I first came across this question about three or four years ago. A colleague of mine and I were doing some work in Houston with the Homeless Coalition there. We had about 50 stakeholders in the morning. We did some systems mapping, reflecting on it. And that night, independently, we met with the president of the Healthcare for the Homeless Organization in Houston. And he hadn't been at the meeting, but his COO had been at the meeting. And he said his COO came back to a board meeting that afternoon of the organization and posed this question to the board. What might we have to give up as an organization in order for the whole system to succeed? Not an easy question, but think about things we've given up in our lives for something bigger. <laughs>